Hugo Boss is not just any brand. It is a brand that embodies the essence of German precision and excellence. From the sleek lines of its designs to the impeccable attention to detail in its craftsmanship, Hugo Boss is a label that is recognized all over the world for its quality and sophistication. But what if I told you, under the shiny surface, there lies a dark past that has long been shrouded in secrecy, a legacy that goes back to none other than the Nazi regime itself. Yes, you heard that right. Today, we are going to uncover the untold story of Hugo Boss and its dark connections to one of the darkest periods in modern history. And we won't shy away from the controversies and struggles that have marked its journey. We'll also tell you the story of how it has evolved and transformed over the years, from its founding in 1924 to becoming one of the leading fashion brands in 2023. So, if you're curious to know, let's get started. The story starts with a boy who was born in a German family back in 1885. His name was Hugo Ferdinand Boss, as in Hugo Boss. This young boy started out his career as a mere merchant in the small city of Metzingen, and after that, he took over his family business, which was a lingerie store. So you could say that fashion was in his blood. After running his family business for a while, Hugo Boss decided it was time to venture out on his own. And since he had experience in the textile industry, he decided to start his own clothing company in 1924. And that is how the Hugo Boss brand was born. This new clothing company specialized in making workwear, sportswear, uniforms, and raincoats. And to his surprise, the company became an instant success. With every passing day, the popularity of Hugo Boss's clothing line kept growing. His small store turned into a large factory, his small income turned into huge profits. The Germans were loving how Hugo Boss was providing them with stylish and high quality clothing. But little did he know that a big hiccup was on its way for his new business. After World War I ended, Germany entered an era of tough economic crisis. The country was facing hyperinflation, unemployment, and political instability. Germany was indebted to the Allied powers for the damage caused during the war and the burden of these reparations was felt by the entire nation. In such a scenario, Hugo Boss was also suffering. Its success line took a downturn, and the brand was struggling to keep up with the changing times. And if it wasn't bad enough, Germany was hit by another crisis, the Great Recession. As the Great Depression hit, the brand's factories were forced to close down one by one. The man who had once dreamed of becoming a successful entrepreneur filed for bankruptcy and was left with just six sewing machines to his name. Just when Hugo Boss felt that his business was about to die, the political landscape in Germany changed. The Nazi party, led by Adolf Hitler, gained momentum, and his ideology of racial purity and nationalism gained popularity among the German people. Despite the controversial and violent tactics used by the Nazi party, Hugo Boss saw an opportunity to save his struggling business by aligning himself with the party. He joined the Nazi party in 1931 and soon became an active member. In 1933, Hitler rose to power and became the Chancellor of Germany. So, Hugo Boss came up with an idea. He decided not only to save his business, but also to make it thrive. He managed to arrange a contract with the Nazis to design and produce uniforms for their soldiers. This newly formed partnership between Hugo Boss and the Nazi regime was a devil's deal, as the uniforms designed by Boss were worn by the perpetrators of some of the most heinous crimes in history. But for Hugo Boss, it was a chance to not only survive, but also to flourish. Hugo Boss's clothing line continued to grow under the Nazi regime, as he designed and produced uniforms for the military and other organizations. His clothing line became a symbol of power and authority, and the brand's reputation soared. But then, World War II ended, and so did Boss's partnership with the Nazi regime. The Allied forces had won, and Germany was occupied by the Allied powers. Hugo Boss had hit another crisis, and the brand once again faced an unfortunate future. 
Before I tell you about the next turning event in this story, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button to watch more amazing videos like this. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you're the first to know when we post new content. Let's continue. After World War II ended, the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime were exposed to the world. The close partnership of Hugo Boss with Hitler was also revealed, tarnishing the brand's reputation. The company was accused of using forced labor to produce uniforms during the war, and Boss himself was investigated for his involvement with the Nazi regime. As a result, the brand faced boycotts and protests, and sales plummeted. The once thriving company was struggling to keep its head above water. After World War II, Hugo Boss was banned from conducting any business. So, he had to find someone who could take over his company. Hugo Boss turned to his son-in-law, Eugene Holy, to take over the business. Eugene Holy tried his best to distance the brand from its dark past. And meanwhile, Hugo Boss passed away in 1948. Under Holy's leadership, the brand began to slowly regain its footing. The company shifted its focus towards men's suits, and in 1953, the first Hugo Boss men's suit was introduced. The suits were an instant hit and helped to solidify the brand's position as a top luxury fashion brand. Holy's rebranding effort emphasized the company's German heritage and craftsmanship. This further shifted the company's image towards luxury fashion and away from its controversial past. The brand's success continued to grow in the following decades. The company was taken over by Holy Sons in 1969, and they made sure their brand reached the height of excellence. In the 1980s and 1990s, Hugo Boss saw a dramatic transformation under this new management. The brand expanded its product offerings, introduced successful fragrances, and ventured into sponsorship of sports. They also introduced a manufacturing technique that was considered unconventional at the time by outsourcing production to factories abroad. This decision turned out to be a game changer, as it enabled the company to produce high quality clothing at a lower cost. The move also allowed the company to expand its production capacity, leading to a rise in its popularity and fame. The company was then acquired by a Japanese group in 1989, and later by the Marzotto Textile Group in 1991, leading to the introduction of new brands and the launch of a fully developed leather products range. As Hugo Boss continued to grow and expand its reach, it also took steps to acknowledge and address its dark past. In 1999, the company established a fund to compensate slave laborers who had been forced to work for the company during World War II. This was a significant step towards acknowledging and rectifying the company's past actions. After that, in 2011, Hugo Boss made a public apology for its association with the Nazi regime. They made a powerful statement that showed the company's commitment to moving forward and distancing itself from its past. The brand continues to take steps to give back and support communities around the world. It donates to charities that support education in developing regions, showing its dedication to creating a better future. While the past cannot be changed, Hugo Boss has shown that it is possible to acknowledge and learn from it and move forward towards a brighter future. In 2021, Hugo Boss announced that it is undergoing a rebranding and splitting into two separate brands, Hugo and Boss. The strategic move involves a clear division in its brand identity. Boss will remain the premium brand, targeting those seeking classic styles with a contemporary edge, while Hugo will cater to a younger, more fashion-forward audience with more affordable price points. This rebranding has signaled an entirely new era for the company. As of 2023, Hugo Boss operates in over 124 countries and has more than 1,316 retail stores worldwide. The company's revenue in 2022 was approximately 3.65 billion euros, with a net income of 222 million euros. Other than solidifying its reputation as a global fashion powerhouse, Hugo Boss has also expanded its product line to include a luxurious range of accessories. From stylish bags and belts to elegant ties and cufflinks, Hugo Boss now offers a complete lifestyle experience to its discerning customers. Their product line also includes glasses, umbrellas, wallets, gloves, and scarves. 
In a nutshell, Hugo Boss stands as a shining example of a company that has overcome a dark past and transformed itself into a global leader in the luxury fashion industry. With its commitment to quality, craftsmanship, and ethical business practices, the brand has earned the trust and loyalty of customers all over the world. What do you think was the key factor that enabled Hugo Boss to overcome its dark past? Share your views with me in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about the fascinating histories of other iconic brands, be sure to check out my playlist. You can find it in the description below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.